give a little bit of wow. Okay, wow. Let's dial this back a little bit. Mm, 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 mm. Let's get into this new hair because baby, I love this. You know the girlies on the internet be trying all kind of stuff. And then I had sent a video to my sister and then she bought this one. It comes, and I'm gonna link everything below. This is called Natural Dark Colors and obviously it's 1B30. This is so stinking cute. You know, if you've been here for a while then you know that back in the day, I used to always, this is done. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed. I love this lip primer and I hate that it's discontinued. I used to always do crochet and I would crochet back my hair and then I would do a bun. Well, girl, I don't even have to do that. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Control Mattifying Primer. And I used to always do the crochet and that just was a lot of work, but this took very minimal effort. And listen, I'm soothed about it. Now, in the front, I didn't use anything too hard. I just used edge control. So this, I feel like I'm gonna have to do something different with tomorrow. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll wash the front again. I don't know, but I just love how easy peasy this was. Now for foundation, I'm gonna use something that I used yesterday because I enjoy this so much. I only used it one time, but I enjoy this so much. This is the one size turn up the base BBB cream, which means beauty blur balm. This is so stinking good. The shade is nice and deep in the best way. And yeah, it's nice and thick. It's just, I don't want it to splash all of me. <laughs> It's nice and thick and just so good. And I've been enjoying this Say foundation brush. I did try the Say foundation in a different video. I remember it being very dewy, which is not my favorite, but great if you like to look hydrated. If you have dry skin, then that's gonna be perfect for you. Look at how much coverage this gives. Wowzers. And so quickly too. So thinking quickly. I love it. I'm like getting confused at where to look because of the different cameras. Cause girl, we upgraded around here. Let me, let me up. Great, you, you feel me? <laughs> yeah. Now, I was complaining about this being very red when I first tried it out, but the look does come together in the end, so let's just deal with this for right now, okay? Praise the Lord. Ooh, and this dress is an Amazon Skims dupe. I'll link this below in case you're feeling froggy, you feel me? Yes. We're just chit-chatting, obviously. I need to do some more hauls, so comment below and let me know some stores that you like to shop at so that I can look at those and do some hauls for you because you know how these days, we be the ones trying stuff out for y'all so you know what to buy. So you don't have to be worrying about going to the stores and stuff like that, okay? I have used this Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer, yep, before. This is the shade 24N. Let me be reminded, I don't know if this will be light enough. It's looking the same way that my Kat Von D shade would look on me. And I recall from wearing this foundation yesterday that because of the shade, stuff is not gonna look as bright, you know me? Like it depends on the it depends on the concealer. Now this sponge is brand new. I don't even know where this one's from. I think this is a beauty blender. I just don't feel like I've seen orange often. Is this a beauty blender? I think it is. I have my sponges all mixed up. I think this is a beauty blender. Yeah, it is. It's giving beauty blender. All links are below, of course. So we're gonna blend this toward the outer part of the face and then leave the front part and go right over here. Cleanest part of the sponge to blend that out very quickly, you see? It's not as light as I need to be. I need a lighter concealer. Let's do the TN 177 from Kat Von D. It's a little bit lighter. Do you see that? A little bit, okay? And then we're gonna do the forehead right here. I normally don't don't do this first, but I do want it to dry a little bit before I blend it in. All right, let's go here right now. Now, just so you know, my sponge is damp. It was soaked. I had to completely soak it through and through and then squeeze out the excess water. Watch my video where I discuss makeup sponges. To make sure your sponge is actually damp and not soaked, but not dry, you feel me? You can use your makeup sponge when it's dry, but it's just gonna be given a different situation versus when it's damp. When it's damp, it's gonna blend it and shear it out a smidge. When it's dry, I mean, you it's like giving you full coverage. And then when it's soaked, it's gonna lift up your makeup. It's gonna ruin you. Okay? Okay, so if you see in the video, watch the video, uh -huh. you will see that the ladder happened on one side because I was doing a test to show you and it is not cute. When you got somewhere to go and your makeup sponge is soaking wet and messes up your makeup, it is the worst. I had to get more product for under my chin, which I normally don't 
do this. I normally don't have to do this, but I had to this time. It's just not showing. Oh, I took too much right here. <laughs> Let's blend this quickly. What in the world? But yeah, it, it's a whole mess. So make sure you watch that video. So in a different video, I tried this e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand. This is a contour. This is the shade Deep Rich, and I really enjoyed it. Let's give it a shot again today. Ooh, I'm taking a lot of product. Wowzers. All right, this is the Sephora 56 brush. Okay, let's get this blend going. I always carry a, a paper towel cut up. I mean, I have them on my desk right now, but I'm holding on to it in case I want to wipe off excess and then just blend. Because at first, we're putting the product onto the face in the areas where we need it. While this still has the product on it, let's do the nose and then I'll do the other side. Because if I wipe it off, then I'm not going to have enough product on it to do my nose. I've been getting questions about makeup classes and whether or not I offer them. Back in the day, 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 when I was a makeup artist, I used to offer in-person classes, just a few. I mean, I didn't do them like, I wasn't like on a world tour. I, I stopped taking clients, right? And I was just mainly working to create content on social media, which was a huge thing. And I'm glad I did, because now this is my full-time job, full-time career, full-time business, ow. And during COVID, when I was out of a job, and it was COVID for God's sake, I was doing virtual makeup classes. And that was okay, but I learned that some people really just need you to be hands-on with them. I felt like I needed to be able to touch your face and show you on your face what to do, because my face is a different structure than yours. You feel what I'm saying? So although that was cute and people do it and you can make money off of it, I just didn't feel like it was the best thing for those people that I felt could have benefited from being more hands-on. Like these are your eyes. This is how you put on eyeshadow for your eye. You feel what I'm saying? My eye does not look like your eyelid. I stopped doing that and honestly, I got busy. I got busy with the goals that I had for social media and I stopped doing that. But I've been getting questions lately about whether or not I offer classes and I don't don't offer them. I don't plan on offering them. I get why people ask and I feel bad because I want to be able to be like, girl, this is how you do your face. You feel me? But I can't think of a number that would make sense for me and for you to do it that I think would be fair. Okay. Cause it, I, it would be like a half day thing or I don't know, you know, it's just like a whole thing. And I feel bad cause I want to be able to help you all. And I'm hoping that my videos help, but I get how you just sometimes need like the hands-on aspect of it. This is the Givenchy Prisma Libre. I tried a different one yesterday. Yesterday. This is number five, Popoline Mimosa. This is lighter, which is gonna be great to highlight the face because I actually want to see some highlightness going on. So let's open this up. And this is cool. It's got quad. It's got a quad in here. We have yellow, a peach, a, like another light yellow peach mix, and then like a little orange situation. It's going to not only set the face but do a little color correct too. Okay. So let's tip this over. Tip it back over, then we have enough. I think we'll see. And I actually think this looks so pretty. Okay, I could do a sponge, but no, no, ma'am. Let's go ahead and use this Sephora 79 brush. We do need to see the creasing. We need to get that together and then squint the face. So let's do this. No extra product. Just making sure that the the concealer is not stuck in the crevices of my eyes. Then you gotta go like this because wowzers. Okay, so let's take some of the products from the cap first because yesterday I took too much. All right, let's go right underneath here. You gotta take some and then put it in the cap and then dust it off because you wanna be able to mix all of them, you know? Going real close to the eyes first and then we come down because that's the place that we want to really get this powder in. I like it. Yeah, it's, it did brighten up the face because of the shade of it all. I do need to get right up in there. So let me take a smaller brush and get right up in here. I don't want that to be greasy, you feel me? I think this is a fun product to use because of the different shades and the ability for it to color correct is a darker one, which is right here. It has red in it to cancel out dark spots. This is nice. This one matches my skin tone more though. And this is number six. I like the one I just used right now because it did brighten up my highlighted areas. All right, back to the Sephora brush. I'm going all around and then tapping off the excess in the cap of the brush. And then let's go wherever I have the highlight. Do you see the peach? The peach is on there. I'm trying not to put so much in one area. That's why I'm just dabbing it like so, and then going back over everything. Lightly going over my nose with leftover at this point. And then after I've tapped off the excess, lightly going over the eyelid area. I want my brows and my eyelid to be shiny. This is not gonna add too much color. So maybe you'll be thinking, oh my God, you put this yellow thing above your eyelids. I mean, look at it. It's not like it ruined my makeup, okay? So just wanna mattify that down. Ooh, I like this 
elf contour situation again all links are below in case you're trying to you know make some purchases or whatever go ahead and do that okay oh i just dusted some off on the paper towel in front of me because i'm going to use this product to set my brow bone highlight once i get to it setting or deepening the actual contour is what's next right now we're going to use the patrick style one what i always do this made for shade okay the, the, the trio all right we're gonna go with the middle one right now which looks glorious yesterday i felt like i needed to mix the middle and the last right here the middle and the last one but today for some reason it's looking good i don't know if it's because my hair is pulled back or what Hmm. It's looking good though. <laughs> we are gonna powder the rest of the face. Don't be alarmed, okay? Leftover product underneath the cheekbone because hi. Now I did go back in with that. Did you see that? I did go back, okay. <laughs> there you have Hazard Liba, it works. Oh my gosh, I need to go through all of the goodies that I got from the trip in LA with Sephora. There's just a lot going on, okay? I'm gonna get to it. Cause I wanna go through it and then do a, a face. Do a face, you know what I'm saying? Do a makeup with it, feel what I'm saying? This is the closest cloud set, the shade is called Velvety. This is a big fluffy brush from Complex Culture. I get questions about this a lot. I did a deal with them a long time ago, years ago. And I got this brush. I don't even know if it still exists or what. It's really fluffy and big, okay? Love using that. Let's see what's next. Highlight, because I didn't do a highlighted under eye, which always feels so strange because I'm used to using the Huda Beauty Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder, which innately is luminous. So it will automatically. <laughs> <laughs> Luminate my under eye, but we don't have that right now. This is the Rare Beauty Pressed Highlight and, and the shade Flaunt, you feel me? Butt of the Beauty Sponge. We're gonna go right in this area. Oh, let me see. It be looking all stark. Hang on, I'm gonna come back to that. Get some of the product off by applying it elsewhere and then come back, because right now what we wanna do is blend that. This sponge is damp, but really it just feels cold. It don't feel wet at all, you feel me? You just one tap in there because this stuff is very very pigmented and we're going easy because it's very pigmented and very light and I was showing you in a different video you can bring this down more into this area to really allow the light to bounce off of the front of the cheek so it's up to you you can just stay in this area or you can bring it down like here ish you feel me close to the eyes it looks natural you don't want this to look like a line you feel me and then down the middle of the nose a little bit and pinch and then here we go I do that very quickly because I've done this for years but do your best to make sure that it's in the middle you feel me but you just go on blend anyway very lightly subtle highlight under the chin you know what i'm saying okay now to blush i have been enjoying these denissa myrick's yummy skin blushes wow okay i like prima donna because i barely ever do a watermelon blush i love golden hour because i love a warm orange red type of blush so I don't know which one I wanna do. <laughs> I'm doing a blue look, so perhaps the watermelon because red is closer to blue than orange is. Let's go with this one. I'm gonna use this new palette from e.l.f. that I got. So get Prima Donna on the sponge. Ooh, color payoff. Give a little bit of, wow. Okay, wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's dial this back a little bit. Take off some of the product. I was very overzealous, okay? Now you take off the product because right now our goal is to blend. We applied it at first and now we want to blend. Okie dokie. This stuff is good, man. The pigmentation of it all, it's gonna give you what you need. And I know that with Denise and Myrick stuff, because she's a makeup artist first, that's multi-use, you feel what I'm saying? You can blot this on your eyelid, on your lips, you feel me? I'm not gonna do that because I don't like to do that. I don't know how it's gonna wear i hate having to reapply lips all day but this is so pretty let me know if you wear pink blush because wow hi Danessa. you know i meant why well, didn't meet her personally but i saw her i was in the same room as Danessa. okay with sephora squad praise the lord now leftover product on this sephora 59 brush to make sure that back here we can still see our contour right it just needs to give gradient contour down into the blush what we doing for the brow? I thought I had something different. Hold on, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Okay, I did use this. This is a Lawless Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil. What y'all be doing for your brows? Everyone's brows are different. So sometimes I don't show what I do because I have micro shading, blading, whatever. And then I change my brow from when I do my makeup. I sometimes feel like, let me just skip the brow and move on to something else. But then I know y'all be wanting to know how I do it. So let me go ahead and show you.
And it's been a while since I've used the Lawless Conceal the Deal Concealer because I haven't had it. And I'm about to re-up on it too. This is the shade Clove, which I used to use for under my brows, but I like to use the shade Mink under, like just for my highlighted area because it just, it's just so beautiful. It's full coverage. It feels like whipped, not whipped cream. It just feels just smooth and delicious. Gosh, this stuff is good, you know? Let me wipe off some excess because if you have too much product on when you're carving under the brow, it leaves this buildup under the brow. And I want this to be smooth, you feel me? So just took off some of that and here we go. And this is great because this shade is light enough for it to show, but not to be too much. It actually looks very natural. It shows, but it's really not too much. It looks very natural. Now, do you use a cream concealer under your brow or do you do liquid? I like either or. I used to use creams a lot on clients who did not do their brows, you feel me? Sometimes you come in, you sit in a chair and you still have some hairs. And I used to sometimes clean up brows, like I would do that. But if we didn't have time or you didn't want me to, oh wow, you had those who were like, no, 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 leave, I'm growing out my brow. You're growing out your brows and you want makeup? What does that mean? <laughs> so I would use a cream because it's thicker. It would hug around the hair strands. And when you set it, it did look like you did not have hair there unless you were really close to the person, you know what I'm saying? If you're standing up close, you can see somebody got hair coming out of their face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, this looks natural and it looks pretty. Let me get a smaller brush again. And then I'm mixing the powder on the paper towel in front of me because it's it came out separated. And then let's set this a little bit. I tapped off the excess because I don't want a mess on the face. This is very beautiful. Just tapped, tapped, tapped that. I could stop right here. What you think? I could stop right here though. <laughs> We're gonna keep on going. Now I don't know if I wanna do this blue. Let's do it. This is the matte paint pot in the shade Soft Ochre. Using the finger because we have what? Warm blood pumping through our veins. And that warms up the product and allows it to what? Blend a lot easier. You could use a brush, which I've done in the past when my nails are just too long to do this, but I cut down my press-ons because when I'm overwhelmed, I cannot function with long nails. I'll link these nails below in case you wanna do your nails at home because I've been doing press-ons for ages. You've been know that. Okay, this is the e.l.f. Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. It's called Denim Days eyeshadow palette that came, it looks like jeans. It's just so cute. I'm thinking the royal blue with a halo of something light in the middle. A mm -hmm. little bit of mixy mixy going on, but we do need to put a crease color down. So let's use this Huda Matte Eyeshadow Palette because while gorgeous, we're gonna go right here to get our crease situated before we go into the blue, okay? Let's walk through this. You know how I live for a good gradient effect and it's just all gonna come together. We've always got to tap off the excess because no need for fallout to fall onto the face. Our face is done, you feel me? If you were doing your eyes first, yeah, I suppose you could just do this very haphazardly, but no need for all of that, you feel me? This is a random brush that I got. I will link an Amazon brush set below that you can do a full face with and I've actually done a video with an Amazon brush set that was no more than 40 bucks. I'll link that video below also, you know, the, the brush set and the video. So you can watch it and see how I used all the brushes. But here we are just putting in our crease color in a very haphazard manner just for this purpose. My eyelid again, like I said, is unique and that's where I find the trouble when you do a virtual makeup class for someone because your eyelid space is just going to be different. But we're going to apply this in a very like open manner because I like how that looks. Also, going to bring the same reddish brown shade under the eye because it just needs to tie in. Generally, the way we're going to apply the shadows on top of the eye are going to match under the eye as well. It just looks really good that way. Bringing it all together, baby. We are gonna go into a blue, but I wanna make sure that it looks natural. So I am gonna take some of this brown in the crease before the blue. It'll make sense, you'll see. We will bring the brown down, but let's see how the blue turns out to know just how much brown we're gonna bring down. I'm gonna start off from the crease with indigo and I do want it to mix with these colors, hence why I'm using this same brush, okay? And there's a nice, ooh, there's a nice mirror in here. Indigo, how you doing? Okay, not a lot of fallout. Ooh, this is a beautiful color, I can just tell. Let's start with the crease and see what happens. Yes, ooh, okay, okay. It really spread. Maybe I should use a different brush. Uh -huh. 
that really spread in a lovely fashion. I just took some more and I'm gonna go on this side a little bit. It's looking a little yucky right now and that's normal because it's mixed with brown. I don't necessarily want my crease to be so blue. I want the lid to pop with the blue, okay? So it's, just, it's gonna look just gross right now. That's why we're gonna be building this up. Taking some more of the color and going right here. I like when this front part is just heavily concentrated with color. Wow! <laughs> Yo, I can't lie, sometimes I be thinking, this is so hideous, what was I thinking? But then it all comes together, different brush that is smaller to make sure that in the crease, I have enough of the blue color, okay? I need this to be more of a gradient than it is right now. So, I'm gonna use my Cinema Secrets brush cleaner, comes through in the clutch, dries very quickly, and it smells like vanilla. If you don't like fragrances, you're not gonna like that. I should've showed you, but I mean, you saw the brush was, the brush had probably on it and now it's basically almost gone. So it dries very fast and that's why I always keep a towel and paper towel on the table in front of me. So I'm cleaning this off very quickly. This doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be clean and look at it. <laughs> it just looks kind of psychotic, but it's clean enough for us to move on, okay? And I need to bring back some of this reddish brown color right here, okay? I need this to be like a sunset. I like how that looks on me. More than just leaving this like that, I don't like that. I need it to blend a little bit, you feel me? So now look at this brush right here. It's got a lot of product on it, right? Taking it on the paper towel in front of me with the cinema seek. Oh, well this is a brown brush. You don't really see that, that dramatically, but anyway, I'm cleaning off the old product that was on here. And this is an antibacterial. I'm gonna go in a different direction. I was thinking something different. I feel like using this palette a few times. I like this light blue right here. Let's do mom jeans. Let me use my finger first and see how that looks. Oh, that is so beautiful. This is so creamy. Oh, look at that. That is so pretty. Wow, it's a matte color, but it feels like it's, it looks like it's a, got a little pearl essence to it. Not a lot, it's still giving matte, but really, really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Beautiful. I like this. Aww, how cute. I don't ever do light blue eyeshadow. Now with the finger, it is hard to get things to be precise, but you know, just figure it out, get it there. Then we're gonna really build this up and fix it, okay? Wow, for a drugstore eyeshadow palette, this is blending nicely, just with the finger, girl. And now we fine tune this with that same color indigo and a smaller brush right here in the corner. Let's do that. Bring this blue in the corner now. It's not mixing with that brown, so we should see more of the blue. Yes, we do. So it is a darker blue and you can see it better on the sides. See, it mixed in with the brown in the crease. So the crease is almost looking green. Do you notice that? I just need there to be a gradient. I just feel better. And don't forget, we had that reddish brown down too. So with the reddish brown and all of that in the crease, it was giving more on the green side. Okay, I think this would be good. Just right here in the corner like so. Under the eye, I want this blue to really show. So I'm using a flat liner brush to get right underneath the head has to go down. But see how we have a reddish brown down already? So it's gonna be given green. So let's pack, 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 and do a little bit of swiping. And I'm doing this in a wide area. I don't want a liner effect. I do want it to be a little bit smudged, but I'm using this particular brush because I need it to be packed on. And we're gonna go over this with a frosty type blue. But again, gradient. You gotta have something down first, in my opinion. Now I'm gonna use this shade right here, OOTD, which is a frosty blue. Let's wet the brush with this Sephora makeup setting spray. Taking indigo now. Gorge, do you see that? This looks so pretty! And now in the inner eye, we could do 90s vibes in the inner. Wow, 90s vibes. Yes, let's do this in the inner eye. Such a creamy, delicious, frosty color. I could use my finger, but let's do, let's do the brush. Head down, because this is frosty, yes. This would be a great color to put in the middle of the eye if I did a halo too. It's giving prom, honey. This is a prom look. I don't get what you say. It's giving prom look, baby. You gonna wear blue? You wanna have a frosty eye? You wanna have a signature eye look? It's prom, baby. We've got this shade in the palette. This is Major Flare. We can just use that to do our eyeliner. 
It looks gray. How lovely. This is the Pixie by Petra Endless Silky Eye Pen in the shade Black Noir. I did smudge this a little bit under my eye because I still want it to be dark and seductive looking. And this went on very smoothly. So I like this. For mascara, I have anyone from Grande Lash. This is Grande Drama Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil. Let's see how you want to look. And we real close up right here too. My lashes, I like to go left, right motions, twirl downward, twirl upward, and keep on doing left, right motions, twirl downward, twirl upward. And then sometimes use the tip to go left, right motions to get the product on. And then to avoid it being clumpy, go up and down and just continue the left, right motions, so on and so forth. Nice. What do you think about this mascara? Comment and let me know. You know how it goes with my AliExpress lashes that I always wear all the time. Less than $3, I'm just expediting the drying for the tackiness process by using my fan, honey. Love these, always link them down below for you. Buy them in bulk so you don't have to wait too long and you have a stash, you feel me? Less than three bucks, I buy them in bulk and then I always have what I need. I got what you want, I got what you want. We have not broken out into song in this video. Something is severely wrong. I like this gray liner. Up close, it gives a different vibe. And lashes just do something for the look, can't you tell? I put them right down in the middle. It should still feel wet and cold. Then I go on the outer part, then I do the inner part, you feel me? <laughs> it should feel wet and cold. And then keep on pressing, pushing it in because hello, it needs to stick. And then take your Revlon curler here and push all of this together. Love that. All links are below. Take a look at the description box and get what you need, girl. Hello. <laughs> I just love how this frosty royal blue on the bottom is picking the whole thing up. I mean, I have on a brown shirt, but that's okay. It's giving nude. <laughs> I don't have to wear a blue sweater, you feel me? It's giving nude. Hi. Okay, Lawless Mascara. I need to go open up another one, but you know me. I like to just burn things down to the very bottom. If I love it, before I open up a new one. I don't want to be wasteful. <laughs> Like this still works, you know? Who else uses their mascara to the very bottom if you love it? You gotta love it though. If you don't love it, you're gonna just toss it and get something new. And I know how that goes too. If you're still watching, give me a thumbs up because you've been here for a long time. You might as well, okay? Support the channel. This is the Lip Bar Savage, honey. I live for this. And it's been a while since I used this, so we are back in rotation, okay? expedite this drying process. Bring it in a little bit because that'll make a difference and then we're gonna use this Give Beauty lipstick called Tragic Me right in the middle. It's a pinky brown tying in with the blush. So cute. Mm, 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 mm. I like how this looks. <laughs> what do you think? I want to highlight the inner part of my lip. I could do a gloss, but no, I want it to actually stay. The gloss may just end up making it look nude. Of course, you can stop right here if you like this shade by itself, but you know me, I like the middle of my lip to look bright. So let's see, I, one of these is a light pink. This is the LYS lipstick. God, it's so small, called Sincere. Goodness gracious, right here in the middle, okay? Oh, it's just a little bit. I could go lighter, but this is real subtle, okay? Focusing right here. I could do a lighter one. This is giving baby doll flirtatious brown skin realness. Do you see my chest? Come on, your girl been working out. You want to see me? Oh, not the lipstick. I cannot. Oh, I can't stand that. Clearly did blot off the excess in the inside of the mouth, but this is the finished look. I hope that you enjoyed the video. All links again are below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.